Hello and welcome back. Today we will be continuing our Victoria 3 tutorial series and we are going to be talking about how to think about trade um, at a more basic level, but it is going to involve deeper understandings of concepts, but we are not going to do a deep dive on the mechanics. The mantra of this video is that profits are temporary, but capitalism, capitalism is forever. And so we are going to first talk about, you know, some background ideas uh, regarding trade that make the rest of the discussion that are important for the rest of the discussion. We're going to talk about how people get trade wrong or what I think the common pitfalls might be, uh, specifically because the UI kind of points you in the wrong direction. And then finally, we'll talk about how to think about trade and also why thinking about trade in this way is important and these sorts of things. So jumping into the background discussions, we're first going to talk about, well, when is trade good? Trade is really good in the early game and it's going to be really good because it's going to be a very large percentage of your total buy and sell orders in the market. Uh, if you see here, we have roughly 10% of our, or sorry, a little bit less than 10% of our coal is, in terms of sell orders, is coming from trade routes. Early on in the game, this will be a much higher percentage, and so trade is more important as it is a larger percentage of your overall market's buy and sell orders, and trade will also fall off as the game goes on and you become a larger share of the global GDP because the more of the GDP that's you, uh, the less you can trade with because you are the market. Uh, and so at a certain point, if you're like 80% of the market, trade becomes pretty useless uh, overall if you're 80% of the global GDP because you will have to make all the goods yourself. And so as the game goes on, especially this combined with the fact that you have an investment pool that's going to build just the most profitable buildings. And so it will often build, you know, the buildings that you, if you're importing a good very profitably, your investment pool uh, or your auto construction is going to almost certainly build that building. Um, that's profitable and so that will make the import route less profitable and so in the long term all the good import routes will get nuked in this way and then all the good export routes you are going to that are extremely profitable your auto queue will not build these right uh, because the price is so depressed and so gradually you will have a smaller and smaller share until the price kind of reaches an equilibrium and so this is kind of important to think about also, let's briefly cover some of the laws. If we come into trade policy, we'll see we have mercantilism, protectionism, and free trade. We have isolationism, but this makes it so you can't trade. Isolationism becomes good again once you're like 80% of the market uh, because the 50% authority and the extra taxation capacity are nice, but you have the negative tax spread, uh, tech spread as well. So once you have all the techs and you're 80% of the market, then this becomes good again, which is kind of a meme, but let's continue on. Uh, mercantilism and protectionism just need to be compared to each other. Uh, if you notice, if we switch to either of these, we would have an increase in tariffs because we are running free trade, which doesn't tariff at all. For mercantilism, what it has is it has a bigger... I it has a bigger tariff on exports or sorry on imports specifically and a smaller one on exports this will make it harder for people to trade to you or to dump goods into your market and it will make it easier for you to export goods to other people's market you can of course prioritize imports and exports and what this will do is it will completely get rid of the tariff on one so if we're protecting the domestic supply what will happen is we will just have a bigger tariff on exports and so it'll be harder for other people to import it from us because they will have to pay 15% extra. Now, just important for understanding the tariffs, you pay it at both ends or it is paid at both ends and the building, the, the difference in the cost has to still be greater. So what I mean by that is um, when I export steel, let's say I export steel, which I think has a, or let's say I export iron, let's say the base price is 30, it's either 30 or 40, I think it's 40. Um, but as I export it, I will pay the tariff of my export tariff and then I will pay their import tariff. And after paying both of these tariffs, so let's say it's protectionism just to make it easy, which is 10% on each end. So if the good was 40, now it's 48. And so the good has to still be after paying the imports and the export tariffs, the good has to still have a bigger difference in the market. Um, prices such that it would still get imported and so if i have a price of 40 on my iron and someone else has a price of 50 after paying both the tariffs the effective price is 48 it's still cheaper and so i can import to them in a productive manner and so you'll notice what that means is the more tariffs you have 
the smaller the roots are going to be necessarily just by virtue of the fact that the equilibrium is going to be pulled in a direction. If, for example, I'm prioritizing exports and I export iron, then suddenly the equilibrium is going to be 44, right? Uh, where they are paying, I'm paying their import tariff. I'm not paying my export tariff, or that's not getting paid by the, the trade centers. And so what this will do is it'll mean I get no tariff if I'm, if I'm encouraging export, but I can export, export much more iron because I can export iron uh, from the price of 44 all the way to 50 instead of 48 to 50. I can keep exporting more iron until it raise or until it lowers the price of their 50 price iron to either 48 or to 44. Okay. So that means you will do less trade necessarily when you are tariffing. But furthermore, this also gives increased trade route volume. So you will do more trade routes or your trade routes will be more, they will be larger per employee required and you will pay less bureaucracy cost. Now this bureaucracy cost bonus is additive with stock exchange. We'll take a look at that in a sec. And you'll have more trade route competitiveness. So you will have priority. So for example, if I'm exporting iron uh, and I'm exporting it at a cost of 40 and France is also exporting iron at a cost of 40, both to Great Britain's market, if I have better trade route competitiveness, mine will go first. And so I will get the better squeeze. Now, in terms of the tech, uh, this minus bureaucracy cost, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is additive with stock exchange, which gives minus 25% bureaucracy root cost. So when you have, uh, you will be paying, once you have all these, once you have all the techs or you have the techs, you will be paying 75% bureaucracy for protectionism and mercantilism, and you will be paying only 25% for free trade per trade route. So this is very important. Free trade allows you to run many more trade routes. And remember, trade is really good in the early to mid game when you aren't just randomly floating a ton of excess bureaucracy. And so the cost of the uh, trade routes is pretty substantive and it can get very substantive as you have more trade routes. And so free trade will be better. But when you go on to free trade, you lose out on the tariffs. And so this kind of brings us to our second discussion or how I think people think about it wrong is they just look at this and they look at their income you know, because they're trying to figure out the game and you just look at your national revenue and you're like, how do I maximize the revenue? And you see tariffs and you're like, I wanna make that number big, all right? As we just discussed, if you are taking money on tariffs, what you are doing is you're taking money, you're taking efficiency out of your trade routes. Whenever you are extracting tariffs, you're making the trade routes less efficient and you're going to make the trade routes smaller with both mercantilism and protectionism because you're dumping goods into the market or sorry, you are making it more expensive in order to do it, in order to do any trade. But furthermore, free trade allows you to do way more trade volume, but this means that you can't do any sort of tariffs anymore. And so tariffs are kind of a superficial way of looking at it that the game kind of encourages you to look at because it see, you see it in your national revenue. You don't see the other benefits of trade in your national revenue as much as you do the tariffs. And so tariffs are a bit of a trap uh, they're not particularly good. Uh, you want to get onto free trade as quickly as possible because these bonuses are better than taking the tariffs off. In fact, a lot of times you would actually want to prioritize exports on everything you're exporting and prioritize imports on everything you're importing, in which case you generate no revenue from tariffs except for, and this is the kind of corner case, when people are importing a good from you that you don't want them to import, you can put it on protect and this will prevent them from importing it or it will make it so they have to pay a ton of tariffs from you to import it if you're trying to depress the price of a good in your market. This is kind of the only situation where protectionism and mercantilism are good as a defensive measure. Perhaps they're good in multiplayer, but not in single player. Okay, well, so the second pitfall is, hey, whenever I do a trade route, and I really blame this kind of thing, look, we can click on the highlights tab and we see all these things with considerable import demand and considerable export demand. I should just do this and pick a really productive one. Wow, that's a ton of levels and it's a ton of stuff and it's a ton of juice. This will make a ton of trade revenue for the employees. So let's take a look what that even means. So if we take a look here, we will take a look at the Trade Center. Actually, let's take a look at a more profitable one in here. And we will take a look at the Trade Center and we will see that they are getting paid a huge annual wage. If we subsidize it, it does nothing. If we come here and we subsidize this, it will increase the annual wage because it is bringing it up to the normal wage. Now, why is any of this important? 
because there's no dividends in this building. It just increases the price of the wages. And so dividends are important for a second reason. It increases the investment pool transfer. And so the increased productivity that happens here does not contribute to the investment pool transfer. The way that investment pool transfer works, or it's important to kind of talk about capitalists and investment pool in here, is capitalists will contribute 20% of their dividends income not their wage income to the investment pool transfer, which if you're on laissez-faire is multiplied uh, by 20, an additional 25% or so it becomes 25% total. And then if you are, if the industrialists are happy with you, it's an additional 20% of that an additional 20% for a total of 29% of their dividends income going to the investment pool. They are only drained 20% because the extra 9% is just from efficiency juice. And so what that means is that we will increase this number of the investment pool transfer. Trade centers do not contribute to the investment pool transfer. Allow me to reiterate, trade centers do not contribute to the investment pool transfer. So when we're looking at this and we're like, woo, productivity, yay. It's productivity, but it's productivity of a kind that is not increasing one of the most important things in the early to mid game, which is the investment pool transfer, because this allows you to trade or this allows you to construct an enormous amount. In order to kind of understand why, we need to take a quick look at our taxation systems. Now, when you're on land-based taxation, you see we're taxing land, income, and consumption. If we go to per capita, we're taxing land, per capita, income. If we go to proportional, we're taxing income, consumption, and dividends. Now, remember, trade centers do not have dividends relative to other buildings, but they do have the income. So what trade centers will do in terms of contributing to your economy or your ability to build, they're still valuable. It's not like having an unproductive trade center is a good thing, but what it will do is it will only contribute income tax and it will not contribute dividend tax, or it will not contribute to the investment pool transfer anything. And so, well, why is this important? Well, what is important is the investment pool transfer. Remember profits, profits are temporary capitalism is forever and so when you are just kind of importing to do some of this stuff it's just increasing the productivity of the trade center which is just increasing the wages of which you only kind of pull money out from the income tax rate it will also make the pops more wealthy but the pops that you're making wealthy if we take a look inside here are not necessarily pops that really need a lot of help because if we take a look uh, and see who they employ it's going to be i believe three-fourths are going to be clerks and the rest are going to be capitalists the capitalists get paid more and so we're empowering some clerks which are you know of intelligentsia petite bourgeoisie and capitalists which are industrialist intelligentsia and so the clerk wages is not necessarily going to really pull, pull up the sol because these clerk wages are not particularly low particularly high and the capitalist wages and the capitalists are extracting a lot it's not going to help out as much in terms of like what you care about in terms of making wages expensive it will increase consumption this is non-zero it is good in extent but what you would really want is someone with you would really want pops with middling wages like 14 and stuff to pull up the sol of the lower rung pops or the average pop instead you kind of just have a poor pop and a rich pop which is a bit worse okay that's a little bit of a di digression but so if we don't really care about the productivity of the, these things, well, well, why don't we put this in anyways? You know, it, it, the productivity is still useful, right? Why don't we import some fruit? No, don't import fruit. The reason being is this is just going to be temporary. And what I mean by that is what will happen is we will uh, export all these fruit. We will receive some of these profits. The profits won't exactly be temporary, but what, what they will do in the long term is actually damage our economy because Fruit will become more profitable, and the automatic construction queue, what this will do as a result of fruit becoming more profitable, is it will build more fruit stuff. And it's like, well, why is building fruit stuff bad? Well, if we come in here, and let's take a look at some arable land, remember investment pool transfer is an important thing. Fruit will start off on privately owned by aristocrats. We talked about how from the capitalists, you would get 20% of their income contributed to the investment pool, and it would generally be modified up to 29%, um, where they're paying 20%, but you receive 29%. Aristocrats only contribute 10%, and unless you have the landowners happy, that is the percent. It's 10%. And so they are contributing way less. And so what we don't want is we don't want our automatic construction queue building a bunch of fruit, which is going to be owned by the aristocrats. We want to build in capitalist buildings right and so what we do when we kind of go to this highlights tab and we go you know 
export this is we encourage our market to build buildings that are going to contribute less to the investment pool and we don't want to do that and the benefits we get from increasing you know the productivity of the trade centers are not that robust as much as we would get from increasing the productivity of our industrial buildings because when we increase the productivity of our industrial buildings like let's say this food industries when we increase this weekly balance this balance 29 percent of that or 20 percent is being extracted from it but a full 29 eventually gets transferred to our investment pool which is going to allow us to construct a lot more okay and so this is kind of this is the way this is the way this is the way you think about it is that this productivity is like most of the time when you see productivity it's productivity of a kind that is getting sent to your investment pool this productivity is not getting sent to the investment pool so it's not good so how do we think about trade then we think about trade in terms of maximizing the number of capitalists in our economy or to try and massage the ownership in a particular direction and so what that means is we are going to be trying to export as much as possible goods that are owned in capitalist buildings and well okay so how do we capture this in a good way what trade is about is not about productivity right it's not about it's not about seeking this productivity entirely this is an important metric to kind of visually understand it and also to know that okay if i'm like doing this the trade route's going to stay at zero it's not going to get big and it's not going to be a lot it's not going to be productive but it's not about this what the trade route is fundamentally about is about buy and sell orders what you care about is changing demand in your market for a good uh, without needing to construct it yourself, changing supply and demand of a good. So let me reiterate, what trade is fundamentally about or how you should think about it is changing the supply or the demand for a good without needing to build it yourself. So for example, if we go to fabric, we will almost certainly be importing fabric. Now it might not be a ton of fabric. Let's find the fabric. All right, silk's fine. We will be importing silk and we are trying to import silk. God, we're not importing a lot of silk. Let's find one we're importing a lot of. Fabric, where are you? So we're importing 2K fabric. Again, our market's pretty big and it, we've had a lot of buildings kind of go towards that, but we are importing fabric. What this does is it increases the sell orders of the good in our market. And this is going to, pardon me one second. All right, we're back. What the increased sell orders will do is it'll make it so our auto queue builds less of this, and it will also depress, depress the overall profitability of the buildings. So what I mean by that is if we are importing a bunch of sugar, if we're creating a bunch of sell orders by importing it from other people, we increase the supply, which is going to decrease the profitability. The less profitable building will not get put in the construction queue as much, and it will also increase the profitability of every industry that uses the depressed good. And so what will happen is places like the food industries will become more profitable. That's perhaps not the best one to select. The food industries will become more profitable. As the price of sugar is depressed, the sugar places become less profitable. And a further third effect happens that's a bit subtle is we also, when we are importing sugar from other people, if you see, uh, we will also encourage other people to build sugar themselves so if we wanted to come in here we could import as much volume as possible sorting by amount is often better than sorting by productivity and then we will increase the supply of sugar in our market which will decrease the profitability of our agrarian owned buildings like this sugar plantation and will increase the profitability of our food industry owned buildings like this or sorry of our capitalist owned buildings like the food industries which are contributing more to the investment pool right and so okay now there's a good example for this um and i think the best example of well how are you thinking of it in terms of buy orders and sell orders is the fertilizer or the chemical plants um, because chemical plants if we look here in piedmont have two output goods and what will often happen is you actually want the boom booms to be cheap and you want to get a lot of chemical plants. The boom booms being cheap make the mines cheaper. It uh, is used in iron mines and these sorts of things. If we take a look here in Piedmont and we look at the iron mine, boom booms are an input for them. Okay. 
And so what we will generally want to do is we will want to decrease the price of Boom Booms. Unfortunately, there are two outputs here. There's fertilizer and Boom Booms. If we export fertilizer and create more buy orders for fertilizer, what will happen is the profitability of this building will go up. It will go into auto queue more. It will be more profitable. It will be built more. And this profitability, roughly 29% of this will be contributed to the investment pool. And so we would want to export fertilizers. This is in fact, one of the highlights in here that is correct in telling you what you should export is we should export fertilizer in order to make the businesses more profitable to chemical plants as this fertilizer price comes up which will decrease the price of these boom booms, which will further decrease the uh, profit or it'll increase the margins as the boom boom prices come down. The margins or the balance here will get bigger and bigger because the inputs have come down, right, of this. And so this will be more profitable. Um, we will be able to put this out at a better rate. And so this balance will be good and notably capitalists owned here. And so what you are doing whenever you're doing kind of any sort of thing in the market, you should not be thinking about import demand and export demand. Instead, you should be thinking about how does this affect the ownership of the buildings or how does this affect the buy and sell orders such that it affects the ownership of the buildings. And so if we take a look at all the trade routes we have in Italy and we sort by goods, you will notice a very common trend here. Um, we are exporting all, we're not importing any clothes. We're exporting a bunch of clothes. Why? They're owned by capitalists. We are importing a bunch of uh, the coal. Why? Because coal is a resource and we actually want to encourage the AI to build it. And even though it's capitalist owned, we don't hate importing it. We're importing a bunch of dyes. Why? Because they are owned by um, the landowners, which contribute less to the investment pool. By doing this, we depress the price of dyes. And by depressing the price of dyes, we discourage it from being built in the investment pool. We make the landowners less profitable and we make everything that uses the dyes like the tailors or the clothiers, more profitable. And so we are taking profits away from the cap or from the aristocrats because we are making their output good less and we are making the, uh, the output good uh, of this more profitable. It's not simply the case that you just want all your goods to be cheap in the market. No, 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 no. You want the goods that are being built by the capitalist owned buildings to be expensive but never run a shortage. And you want the goods that are being built by the agrarian buildings to be cheap. This is how you think of where you want the prices. And so coming back to our trade routes, I said coming back to our trade routes, if we look, we're also importing a ton of fabric. We're exporting fertilizer. We're importing fish, which is one that's, uh, fish is actually incredibly efficient, but you run out of fish and it is an important input for your food industries. We're exporting all of this furniture and notice it's very consistent there's none of these where we're splitting it and we're doing any sort of arbitrage games although you could do this where you are importing from markets where it's really cheap and exporting to where it's expensive we're not doing this um, because this great equalizer of the auto queue is kind of just ruins any sort of super big margin you could have unless you're subsidizing buildings we're importing grain we're importing hardwood. Again, we want to encourage the AI to build the resources. And this is an important input for everything this goes into is capitalist owned. So even though the hardwood is capitalist owned itself, we don't mind importing it. Same thing with the resources here. We are exporting liquor, which is an output of an industry or a capitalist owned building. We are exporting luxury, all the luxury goods very consistently because we are increasing the demand for our capitalist owned uh, consumer goods factories and we are de uh, and so we increase the profitability of all of these we don't really care too much that it lowers the SOL of our rich pops we don't really care much at all and so we're importing uh, meat we're importing opium notably maybe you could skip the importing opium if you like opium is actually very efficient but we're importing the meat this discourages livestock ranches from being built right um, it also makes our pops happy because cheaper consumer goods we're importing silk Although we're having a little bit of problems with our imports, not too much right now, um, mainly because China's in our market. That's kind of what's going on there. Uh, we are exporting steel. Steel industries are very productive. We should probably be exporting more steel, but uh, it's a little bit hard on the prices. Notice we have several of these that aren't profitable. That's not maximally what we care about. If we wanted to super manage stuff, we would probably delete all the pro uh, unprofitable routes and then put them back in later. But we're having them here just in case they start to become profitable later. Um, and you'll notice tons of these. Uh, 
sugar importing 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 tea importing tobacco importing very consistently tools exporting wine importing and wood importing and so you get the idea it's not about it's not about this line you know where we're we're not caring about this or this we do care about this but what we are caring about is instead the goods themselves, the ownerships of the buildings they affect, because we want the buildings that are, again, capitalist owned to be profitable. And so just to kind of briefly summarize a little bit of what we talked about here, is that uh, we are, uh, trade is very strong in the early game. Um, and, you know, it's a little bit of a trap uh, to look at tariffs and be like, hey, I want to increase my tariffs because we look at national revenue. Generally speaking, tariffs, uh, you won't be able to tariff that much, and you will be able to trade a lot less when you are tariffing. Um, and the trade, the tariff is not offset by the money you could get from the investment pool transfer. The investment pool transfer is a much stronger mechanic overall, and instead what you want to do is you want to use trade in order to increase buy and sell orders in your market uh, such that you are depressing the price of goods that are built by arable land stuff, by the farms, stuff like dyes and fabric, and increase the price of stuff that is built by capitalist stuff, stuff such as clothes or fertilizer. Although fertilizer is mixed, the fertilizer is a little more complicated, but stuff like this. And so this is what you want to do. Another trap is just increasing the productivity of the buildings of the trade centers. What's notable about trade centers is they don't have dividends, they just keep increasing the wages of the people there, which is a positive effect, it's not non-zero, but they're not gonna contribute dividends to the investment pool transfer, and so making these profitable is not the same as making a tooling workshop profitable. Making a tooling workshop profitable is much better because they have a positive balance, and so they have dividends, and these ownership share dividends, these are gonna get reinvested, and so this is very, very important. They're reinvested. So, it's much more important to focus instead on, you know, the types of goods, not the profitability of the goods, and these sorts of things. Um, I think uh, probably the best example is fertilizer, of uh, an instance where you are intentionally exporting to increase the price of good uh, so that another good will be uh, it'll be more profitable it will increase in the investment pool notably this is put out by cattle ranches so if you export this while importing fabric and meat you will not really encourage the cattle industries to be built another notable one is if you are in the ottomans or if you're <laughs> if you are any muslim country your food industries will notably be more efficient uh, in terms of just raw output uh, if they are producing liquor but liquor is taboo, so you'll almost certainly want to export liquor to really make your food industries a lot more profitable if you're playing in a Muslim country. This is a very interesting kind of dynamic, but your your liquor prices will generally just be like absolute booty. Let's actually swap over to, let's see. Actually, we're not gonna swap, but this is just something to think about as well. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and have a good one.